Good morning. Let's start this morning with prayer. Wow. Sunday morning. Good Lord's Day to you. July 9th. Woohoo. First Sunday. Is it? Oh, no. Second Sunday. Father, we are thankful for this second Sunday. Um, bless you, oh God. I thank you. I give you glory. I give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to read through 1 Corinthians 16, 5 through 12 from all kind of versions. After I go through Macedonia, I will come to you, for I will be going through Macedonia. Perhaps I will stay with you for a while or even spend the winter so that you can help me on my journey. I don't want to, I don't want to see you now just in passing since I hope to spend some time with you in the follow as Lord allows. But I will stay in Ephesus until Pentecost because the wide door for effective ministry has opened for me, yet many oppose me. Now, if Timothy comes, see that he is with you without cause to be afraid, for he is doing Lord's work, as I am also. Let no man therefore despise him, but conduct him forth in peace, that he may come unto me, for I will for him with the brethren. As touching of our brother Apollos, I greatly, greatly desire him to come unto you with the brethren, but this will not at all to come at this time, but he will come when he shall have convenient time. Convenient time. So basically the title is Do Not Despise Your Leader. Wow, strong title, right? Do not despise your leader. Uh Verse 1 and 4 of chapter 16. So, of course, uh, Paul did not write in verses, uh, in numbers. So, but as he concludes, so he's in, in the conclusion of his letter, uh, he sets the letter to talk about you cannot serve and money. And then he says, you need to make offering, regular offering, so that I could take it to Jerusalem. And then he says, well, and then I'm going to spend winter with you. Uh, and I want you to finance my mission effort. <laughs> so Paul was very blunt about his need and very open about people need, need to support his work. Because he was very confident that the work that he was doing is from the Lord. And he would not have otherwise. He really wanted people to support him. Um, so he made it very public. So I want you to help me on my journey. May bring me on my journey or send forward or send me on my way, right? It's, it talk about escort or aid, financial aid of the travel, right? Um, he really wanted church to participate in giving for the mission work that he was doing and he did not make excuses he did not feel shy about it he said well that's what you ought to do uh, it takes confidence it takes you know i i live like that for 20 plus years now when i'm no when i know that wow this is a project that really needs support then i become confident <laughs> and, and uh, i really very, very open about that. But he says, but there is a lot of opposition as well. Um, I do not want to see you now in just passing since I hope to spend some time with you, if the Lord allows. But I will stay in Ephesus until Pentecost because why door for effective ministry has opened for me? Yet many oppose me. Wow. So he's talking about both opportunity and also challenge. Right? Both always go hand in hand. It's never, never opportunity, opportunity, all the good things. When good things come, bad is part of the good. Just be aware of that. Mature enough to know. I mean, you've lived enough years in your life, you know, that not all things are all good all the time. And, and when good comes, bad is part of the good that as it comes. You know that, right? And then it talks about open door. Wow. I mean, um, and he's talking about door that only God can open. Um, after being Christian for many, many years, many decades, you look back and realize, wow, how in the world 
was able to do that. And then you realize that's a door that no man can open. It was all God. It was God. It was God. It was God. So he's recognizing that right now. You know, uh, he said, you know what? I realize this is God opening this particular opportunity. So I want to maximize. I want to jump in it. I want to stay in Ephesus until Pentecost because, hey, opportunity came. And also equally challenging events, right? There's enough challenges with opportunity, but opportunity, what will come out of it is so much greater than the challenges that I faced because of that. So he's going for it. And then he says, now, uh, I've sent Timothy. When he comes to you, please, he may be with you without fear. That Don't do anything that will cause him to be afraid. Uh, Timothy was very uh, timid, uh, soft-speaking, uh, soft-spoken leader. He didn't have the apostolic anointing like Paul, but he was more the shepherd. He said, but don't put him in fear. Ah, phobos you know, where we get phobia. But aphobos means fearlessly. So don't put him in fear. Do not uh, ignore. Actually, the word is despising. Let no one, therefore, despise him. You know, not only not put him in fear, but I dare, I dare you not to despise him or ignore him or mistreat him, right? Um, but accompany him in peace. Don't let anyone mistreat him because he's young, because he's weak. I guess he was kind of a fragile person. I mean, to a point where Paul said, why don't you take some wine? Take some wine. Get well. Take wine as a medicine. Kill those uh, you know, stomach bugs. I don't know. I don't know what wine killed in those days. But to prevent Timothy from getting daunted and returned without teaching the gospel because Timothy's timidity, soft and rather a young minister in a church where there are many with pride, with gossip and much conflict. Okay, yeah, I mean, as a young pastor, he probably freaked out. You know, how do you do as a young man dealing with older men living with his mother-in-law, right? How, how do you deal with that? And, and keep on saying that I belong to Paul, I belong to, you know, uh, uh, you know, Jesus and what about you? No one's saying that I belong to Timothy. <laughs> so how, do, how does he deal with that? And then Paul says, well, Apollos, I told him to go, but Apollos says, no way, Jose. Now concerning our brother Apollos, I strongly encourage him to come to you with brothers. And it was not at all his desire to come now, but he will come when he has opportunity. Apollos says, good riddance. I don't want to go to Church of Corinth. Now they have a group of followers following me opposing you, you know, you know, it's, he said, oh, please, it's uncomfortable for me to be there. So rightfully, he's not getting engaged. So you know, way, Apollos is man of integrity too. Because some people would actually take that as an opportunity for popular contest, popularity contest, that go there, manipulate, and use it as a financial gain and all that. And we see that happen over and over and over again you know, in real, real world. Well, these are men of integrities. And they said, no way. I don't want to be part, part of the mud fight where uh, my name is mentioned as part of the sect or the followers call me their leader. And we don't want to be part of that. So he's drawing the line. James Chang writes in verse 12 is a story of Apollos, who is Paul's successor. When we look at the situation, then Apollo was uncomfortable to be in the middle of conflicts of the current church left the church because of the hurt he received from the rude saints. <laughs> rude saints. Boy. Oh, man. I'm uh, part of the Standing Stone Ministry. So I am actually counseling, mentoring some pastors and young pastors. And some of the stories they say, what the sheep, the congregation has done to their pastors is almost fictional, almost unbelievable, almost no, there's no way they would have done that. And I, I really, please do not neglect, do not despise, do not have your leaders in fear because of you. Honor them, love them, care for them, show your gratitude, um, show them your attitude of gratitude, buy them dinner, buy them lunch, give them a gift, you know, Thanksgiving comes, Christmas comes, you know, you know, if it's birthday, 
send him send something you know i mean he's maybe love language maybe gift and maybe so then it would be good right or uh, if his love language is words then say kind words whatever but know your shepherd as much as shepherd needs to know sheep sheep please know your shepherd what they need uh, you know because like paul is commanding people of corinth to be nice to timothy because timothy is different than him He's recognizing that and honoring his mentees and, and try to encourage. That's the kind of church that Paul wanted. Paul wanted harmonious, unified, loving Jesus, you know, and 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 supporting. And he's, he's very blunt. He said, well, you know, I need to continue my mission work, right? Uh, I told you that the boat fare was three times more than airfare these days. So traveling with company to preach the gospel and help the poor probably was very, very costly endeavor. And yet he says, without any shame saying that, well, you ought to help me, help me, you know? So, yeah, I was actually uh, teaching Romans. Remember, I said large, large part of Romans actually is written as a fundraising letter. Uh, and I realized that even first Corinthians, as he wraps up, uh, chapter 16 he's saying that yeah you know so that you can help me on my journey you can send me on my journey you may bring me on my journey uh, meaning that why don't you sponsor my missional work amen to that so father god i pray the spirit of god to come and minister we would like to hear from you that we would like to see your kingdom come not by our will but father by all these brothers and sisters serving you so effectively all over the world. Help us, oh God. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Have a wonderful Sunday this, mo this morning. Yeah. Love your leaders. Say hi to your pastors. Yeah. Give, give them some Starbucks uh, coffee, credit gift card or something. All right. Lord bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye.